Some of you right now, you're gonna be somebody crazy in two, three years, four years, five years. You're going to be somebody that the world looks at and it inspires thousands of people, millions of people, maybe a country, maybe who knows? And you might be like, that's not me, Ian, there's no way. That's your problem. There's no bigger achievement than breaking through all of these barriers and looking back and understanding that it was all meant for a reason. Five things that being under fire does. A lot of us, we find ourselves in these situations where we're like, man, why did God put me here? Like, this is really hard for me. It's hard for me to understand. It's like I'm going through this season in life. And I want you to think about something too as you go through these seasons of life. Because every season that you're going through, it's always gonna end. There's always gonna be a different season. Everything is temporary and nothing lasts forever. Now I'm gonna get into these five things, but just know, even if you're winning, it doesn't last forever. Even if you're losing, it doesn't last forever. When my grandfather was dying, it was really hard for me, but I am proud of this moment because I kept, I stayed consistent. I didn't break. There was a lot of times in my life where I just gave up and I can look at those moments full of shame, but I don't even look back at them. I'm like, whatever, I just move past it. But in that moment, I had my sister pass away. She had three kids. I had a lot of, no life insurance. You know, I mean, they had no dad. We had to go into her house, take her stuff out of her house, take the kids, the three-year-old's like, where's my mom? He's crying. That's a very sad time, okay? That's a very trying time to get on a plane, know your sister's dead, and fly right on over there, okay? That's hard. Grandfather's dead. All these things, man, all these things. Basically a divorce, not married, but everything's splitting up, everything, you know, wrong. And then I'm opening a new company. And then I'm losing all my money. And at this time, I had one thing, a good attitude. I had one thing, one thing, I had my health, I had an attitude, and I, I had working out. And I also had a perspective of gratitude because I said, if I can deal with this, I can deal with anything. I can deal with anything. Whatever I'm going through, I always don't look like I'm going through it. I'm like, it's serving me. It's serving me for something. It's here for a reason. It, everything that's been wrong in my life has always served me later on in life. I don't know why, but also it's biblical. You know, I have the Bible everywhere I go. So I could quote 40 Bible verses that have something to do with what I'm saying. Okay. But I want you to think about your life. Like this isn't about my life. I want you to think about these certain things in your life that you can use to spend to like motivate you. And as you're going through it, you can use to get more consistent. You can use to be a better person. You can use to not break. You can use to be happy. You can choose to see whatever, man. You know, uh, there's a, a famous philosopher. I want to say it was like Aristotle or something that said, you know, um, the wise man seeks happiness under his feet. The, the, the small man seeks happiness in the distance. Like, your life is as good as it probably could get right now. It's great, man. Like, honestly, man, I look back when I was broke and I was sometimes more happy then. You know, like, I thought making being a millionaire would be, would make everything better for me. No. Actually, it's quite the opposite. There was a whole lot more responsibility, a whole lot more this, a whole lot more that, a whole lot more this, a lot more understanding, a lot more pressure. But who you become on that journey is way more important. But while you're on that journey, having that attitude, having, you know, that, that perspective, man, that is super powerful. So these five things have to go with what I just said. Five things you become under fire. Hey guys, it's the Macklin Twins, let's go. You can join our free training where you're gonna see thousands of one percenters just like you in our community training on personal development, sales, mindset, yes. and greatness. Yes. Join us, it's free. Click the link in the description, Elliot Training let's Academy. Go. We'll see you on the inside. Let's go baby, click the link. And then number one is pain. Pain, life's greatest teacher. This is life's greatest teacher. Guys, some of you right now, you're gonna be somebody crazy in two, three years, four years, five years. You're going to be somebody that the world looks at and it inspires thousands of people, millions of people, maybe a country, maybe who knows. And you might be like, that's not me, Ian, there's no way. That's your problem. Man, Steve Jobs, look at Steve Jobs. You know, 
I was, uh, you know, his kids are in Palo Alto, California. I have some friends out there and I was on a Zoom call or I was on a FaceTime and one of them was like, oh, this is one of their daughters. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy, right? I, so I started looking in and even studying his story more and where he came from and it just kind of got me intrigued, right? You know, he had a divorce. You know, he had kids in a previous marriage. He had all this stuff that this guy's facing out here. This guy's healthy, bigger than him, more jacked, all this stuff. You know what Steve had? He had a mentality. Even while he was dying, he was he had a mentality that was unreal. He didn't look the craziest. He just thought the best. It's our thoughts that determine our life. This guy's a better speaker, better talker, better all this stuff, but he's he's in the, he's in his he's in his head. Okay, and we can all get in our head, but you can't stay there. You got to move out of it. Okay, but this pain should be this guy's greatest teacher. But if you don't use this pain as your greatest teacher, it's it's the it's the biggest lesson that you're gonna miss. Steve used a lot of these things when he went into a company. He built this company, and then they stole it from him, and he had to. Go, and then that that brought him to open Apple. If they didn't steal that company from him, if this thing didn't happen, he doesn't go get this. His pain gave him this. It, almost anybody that you look at, pain gave them their mission, their purpose, their lesson, their everything. So if you mistake pain, I mean, just look at Oprah Winfrey, like anybody. You know, she was, her, her mom had her when she was 13. She was sexually molested multiple times in her life. She had all of these nasty, dark things. She was homeless at 16, like all of this shit. I don't even know the whole story, but, but, but it was bad, right? All of that became who, who everybody looks up to her. For. Like, it's like, if you have the most fucked up story, you're typically the most qualified person. <laughs> like, th like, that's how it works. Like, God uses these broken people and these things that a lot of you, you know what to do, but you don't do what you know. Like, you, you have it in you. You have the pain already. You have the suffering already. But you got to use this sucker. You got to grab onto it and get clear, man. Pain is the life's greatest teacher. Okay? Number two, pressure. Pressure, we already know, produces diamonds, but that's so, like, people don't understand what that means. When you're forced to become somebody else, a lot of you have not been forced to become somebody else. You may have not decided to burn the boats to the next life that you're supposed to live, and that means you're not living with pressure, okay? When I decided to leave the car business, I went online, I told, I told the closest people next to me, I said, I'm going to do this thing and I'm never going back there. And if I, don't ever let me go back there. I have to be all in on this thing, ever. I moved across the country, I did the, I, 29 years I lived in this state. I have it all tatted over me. I was as Colorado as Colorado gets. Like I was known for it, known for it. You, they'd call me the Colorado kid. I got, I had a Facebook site. It's called I'm from Denver. And it was the most viewed Facebook site in, in like out of Facebook world. There's there, nobody who puts up more impressions, more engagement, more anything. I owned it at the end of my career. I bought, somebody built it and then I bought it for my brand. Okay. Now, what does that even mean? Well, I, I literally, once I knew what was good for me, I severed ties. I, I literally sold this thing for pennies on the dollar. I, I, I literally, people thought I was just giving away my career. I built the probably one of the biggest, baddest ass automotive sales careers in the history of time. It was so good, I was working three days a week and I was still selling 50, 60 cars, okay? And I walked away from it all because I knew what was good for me. You didn't have to convince me. You didn't have to tell me. You didn't have to, I didn't have to have somebody motivate me. I knew what I needed to do and I went and did it. Write this down. You don't need more information. You need more knowledge. Knowledge is the application of information. If you have the information right now, you need to get knowledge from the market and knowledge from your action. When you take action, that's when that knowledge occurs. That's when that experience occurs. That's when you know what you're capable of, man. Some of you, Mike, I told you, I said, there's no way you're ever going to do a video a day. You still, you, you said, oh, Ian, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't even think you did it. I don't know, man. I don't think you did it. I don't think you did it. Your girl needs to hold you accountable. You didn't do it and it would change her life if you did it. I don't know what it is, man. I know how special you are. You know, she knows how special you are. You would be a great coach to the industry that you're trying to coach, but the problem is you got to sever the ties. If you're gonna do it, what is, what is it worth being half in on anything? What is it worth thinking about something? What is it worth? What is it worth studying the thing if you ain't gonna do the thing? Whatever you're gonna do, I wanna urge you guys on this call, high level. If you're a dad, be a dad at the highest level. 
If you're, you're, me and my brother are competing right now to be the best dad, and I'm pissed off right now because my brother bought all these new baseball games for his kid. He's doing all this shit. I got like three small baseball games. I'm going right to the store after this. I'm buying all the damn baseball games I can get, and I'm training even harder than him. Okay? But that's how we live, man. We live in like a state of com competition with who can be the best at the areas that matter to us. God matters the most to me. My brother started carrying the Bible and he started carrying it to like everywhere. I started carrying it to the gym. I'm like, dude, you know what? If you bring a God with I'm bringing God everywhere I go. Okay? You know, like, it's just like, and then Andy sees it and he's like, no, no, no. You know, he texted the group after we started doing that. He said, if anybody sees me without my Bible anywhere, even if I go to the bathroom, you better call me out in the group chat. Because me, Evan, and Andy kind of act the same. Like we like feed off of each other. We're like, oh, you're doing that. I'm doing that. You're doing that. I'm doing that. You know, so much so I started working out with Ali in our company. And you know what he did? He went and paid Ali three times the price and then told him he had to work with him. I'm like... He stole my gym partner. I, I don't tell Andy certain things because if I tell him something that's like good for him and I know he can get it versus me, he goes and steals. I never tell him what book I'm reading. I never tell him what audio book I'm reading. His wife doesn't either. She keeps her book locked in her car. He can't have the keys to that because he will steal that information. I never tell Andy what I'm going to speak about on stage. You know why? Because if I tell him, I'm like, I used to tell him like 10 minutes before when I was going to go out on stage and talk. And then he would give my whole talk before I got up there. And I'd be like, what am I going to talk about? He's like, I don't even know. What you're I didn't steal your shit. I'm like, bro, you know what I mean? But it's, it's that competition. It's that competition to act on something we know. I want you to act on what you know. I want you to act on what you've heard. I want you to act on all the training. You guys are so invested. So invested. I don't doubt your commitment. I don't doubt your, your ability to show up. But some of you, I doubt your ability to act. I do. And I want to see more action. I want to see more breakthroughs. I want to see more doing the thing that you're doing. And because here's what I want you to do. I want you to get evidence from that pressure that you can do that thing at the highest level with the other people that you think that can, that can do this thing at a bigger level than you. Listen, if Michael did a video every day for 365 days on YouTube, he'd be the best speaker in the country. That's what it would happen. He'd get market evidence back that he changed somebody's life. He'd be like, oh shit, this is real. People would reach out to him. He'd be like, what the fuck? And then 365 days later, he'd be totally different. I have a nine-figure business owner, Jody Batista. You guys see him in the group? I told him, I said, after six, after six months of me coaching you, like he's asking all these high-level things. I said, dude, you're never going to understand what I'm saying. We got to go this route. He's like, no, I want to go this route. I'm like, bro, you got to learn to dribble a basketball first. And then you can shoot threes. He's like trying to shoot threes. I'm like, do one video a day. He's like, that's not the, that's not, I'm like, that is the key. Listen, as a coach, speaking to you real quick, Michael, what he developed over those, over, over doing it for 90 days, just 90 days, he's like, dude, you develop a whole new identity when you do that. Cause you have to watch every video. You have to critique every video. You have to see how you speak. You have to see how you talk. You see the leads come in. You see the leads don't come in on videos. You see how the whole thing works. Now I can have a, a higher level convert. And he's like, I understand what you're, what you're saying now. I understand what you're saying now, but he didn't like how he spoke for the first two, three weeks. He didn't like it. He saw it. He was like, gosh, I'm, how, do you, how are you going to get better on Zoom calls? How are you going to get better doing the thing, doing the thing, whatever the thing is, doing the thing that you're trying to do at a high level more, okay? Um, you know, pressure, that's pressure. Put some pressure on your, put some pressure on your goals. Put some pressure on your deadlines. Like, don't play casual. Like, decide what it's going to be, man. Evan's the chief, chief dream officer in our company. He, he goes and meets with the families of our teammates, and then he says, hey, what's your goal? They say, I want to get this house in six months, eight months, not whatever the goal is, six months, let's say. He said, let's do it in four. They say, okay, well, it's a $600,000 house. I need to get $60,000 to get that house. I got $14,000 in the bank, so we need to get XYZ money by this date. Okay, I'm going to keep you accountable to hitting it in four months. Most people just can't keep themselves accountable to one little goal that would change their life. What happens is, is since somebody's keeping accountable to their dream, they go get that house, then they get evidence that they can do these goals, that they can do these things, that they can handle this pressure, that they can show up for themselves. But if you never have a goal, you never have a deadline, and you don't have any pressure in your life to get somewhere, you never get there. That's like having a GPS in your car and then being like, I'm going to go down to Phoenix. I've never been down to Phoenix. I'm in Fountain Hills, but I'm just going to go and not even use my GPS. Yeah, you need to make it, dude. You, you end up in Prescott. 
You'd be, you'd be in a whole different part of the world. But you got a GPS right there, plug the bitch in. And then go where it takes you. Okay, so I want you to write down, where are you gonna be in by May? Where are you gonna be by March? Where are you gonna be in the next 90 days? You know, I like that Michael's doing 75 hard because he knows where he's gonna be in 75 days. You know, if you're not doing the fitness challenge, you're not checking in, you're running your play, not my play. You're running your play, not the LA Group's play. We have the 100-day check-in for a reason. Because honestly, if you get a, if you commit to 100 days of something, it's very likely you're going to see life differently and you're not going to go backwards. You know, you guys know, man, I was like, man, I got like I, my 100-day challenge last year. You know, I was like, hey, I'm going to stop drinking. And then I did that thing, right? And then it was like, we're at like 370-something days, right? You know? And I told you guys that I fell off in the middle of it. So I don't know if I actually should count that because I was like, I drank a beer in the middle of the challenge, like 200. But I was I was gearing for 100. And then I got to like 300 days, I drank a beer. And then I was like, I don't even really like this shit. And then I felt like stupid for it. And then I was like, I don't know, man. Like maybe I've just passed that phase of like in my life, like, cause I didn't really do the challenge in mind of just stopping forever. But it's funny how you adopt a new habit and you prayed for that new habit. You didn't even think it could come, but through the discipline, through the work that you don't want to do, you get a result that you didn't even think you could get. And then it becomes who you are. Now I don't even have to try. Now I didn't even have to think about it. Now I can go into any situation and I actually like being different. I was in Dubai and these guys are doing this and that and drinking and hanging out and all this stuff. Dude, I was just winning. I was just, I'm setting myself up for years. Dude, I'm setting myself up to have a jet when I go back down to Dubai. I'm setting myself up. You know, I got bigger dreams than these guys. I want to have a private 747 plane like Trump. I want to be flying my team around the country to five global offices. I want to be flying my company around. I, I'm dreaming it. I'm seeing it. And if you start thinking small, you start doing small shit. You just end up doing, you got to start thinking big. Bigger. Get around bigger dreams, bigger action, bigger pressures, bigger pain. Me and Andy were talking about, we're like, damn, man, what would it look like if we had two or three global offices? Now that's dreaming. We know what to do down here. We know what to do where we're at. We know what to do here. This is like riding a damn bike. It ain't that hard. Building it was hard. Building it was a dream. But now you got to go, you got to reach for more. You got whatever you're good at, get good at something else. But also, you better be the best at what I'm telling you to get, you've already gotten good at, okay? And then get better at something else or add another skill. All right, number three, purify. Purifying, like purifying the heat, clean the heat. Like as you're in the heat, it's gonna purify you, man. It's gonna make you a new human. It's gonna wash you of all the bullshit in you when you're in pain and then that pain comes in it's going to shape you and purify you into a new human so my main goal of this zoom is to talk about this pain to talk about this pressure because you know what i know a lot of people are acting like they're not in pain and they have a weird relationship with pain theirs is like wham 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 versus like it's good for me so I, i'm trying to teach you right now that like even in this pain it should purify you number four it should reveal who you really are and if you stay with a good attitude, this guy told you it's getting a divorce and he's got 120 something page, seven years of finance due, baby shit. Okay? Dude, it's fuck it. Who cares? It's already here, bro. Why are you bitching like a baby? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I, I don't know how else to react. Cause that's, if it was facing me, I would be like, I already made the decision. That's what comes with it. Let's go handle it. And, and there's no, I'm not emotionally thinking about it. I'm not emotionally attached to doing the work. I'm not emotionally attached to thinking about it. It's going to reveal who I am. Okay. And here's the cool thing. When you actually, it reveals who you are. If you actually are doing the work and you're actually ready for it and you have a good approach to it at the end of the journey, when you cut, when that boat cruises out of them clouds, ah, because it's going to happen that the, 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 the clouds are going to part. Jesus is going to give you a way out and you're going to look back and you're going to say, damn, I was a little Holy shit, man. I didn't handle that good at all. Or you're going to be like this. Oh, bro. That whole time I didn't let that break me. I didn't let it stop me. I didn't let it destroy me. I didn't let it creep into my family. I didn't go home and bitch to my wife or my husband about it. I just fucking handled it. And yeah, I might complain one or two times, but if he complains, you should kick his ass. Just be like, hey, stop it. Come on, you got this. You're, you're powerful. Women, your guy needs to hear that he's powerful. Us men, we're, very, we're different than women, right? So sometimes they need, you need to say, hey, 
Remember, you're built for this shit. Get out there and fuck it up. Go, get out, get out here, go to the gym. And then like, let them get back to it. We do need that as men sometime. But also men, we're not weak pussy. Okay, so you need to wear a shield of armor. Women on this call, you are not weak. You are not weak. Don't let anybody think make you think you're weak. You ain't fucking weak. Chelsea ain't weak. Cherish ain't weak. She's been through war. She's been through war. And it's for a reason. It's so you can lead other women through what you're going through. Eventually, it's all going to make sense. And you're going to come back out and you're going to be like, damn, I'm so happy I did that. Number five, produces your purpose. Man, I've kind of said that the whole time. This is the ultimate achievement. This is the, there's no bigger achievement then breaking through all of these barriers and looking back and understanding that it was all meant for a reason. And you know what? There's not one person in the world that's tr truly aware of what I just said. There's probably not one person in the world that's really truly great at something that if, I, if they watched this last part of the Zoom, wouldn't be like, bro, that's my whole life. Like if you simplified my whole life, that's exactly what I've dealt with my whole life. I mean, just look at anybody, man. You know, look at anybody. Any, it, it, when you're able to deal with these pressures, with this pain, and then you're able to make it your purpose at the end of it, damn, man, it inspires millions. It inspires tons of people. I mean, just look at the people that you look up to. Go find the fuck-ups in their life. Go find the shame in their life. Go find the doubt in their life. Go find the fear in their life. And honestly, here's a hack. If you're feeling like your shit's overwhelming, go watch documentaries on these guys. Tesla. You know, go watch documentaries on him, dude. Yeah, he was going bankrupt. He couldn't pay his bills. He was getting ready to lay off thousands, of, a thousand employees. You know how that feels to let down a thousand families? You know how what it feels like to not sleep at night? You got millions of dollars stolen from you. You have th two companies that are getting ready to collapse. You're about to get shamed and embarrassed. You're trying to prove people wrong. You had employees quit on you left and right and you were trying to make it. You know what that feels like? Yeah, that's pressure, dude. What you're dealing with right now, ain't none of us dealing with that much pressure. Come on, man. So... Go watch one of these movies. Have you guys seen the like the relationship of David Beckham and 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 his wife? You know, I mean, dude, that's a crazy one. Go watch that on Netflix. Go watch that, dude. They had the whole world looking at them. The whole world. They were the most popular people in the world at the time. And then, you know, David had all this stuff happen in his life, and then he missed this goal, and then the whole all of England was they he went from being the golden boy to the guy that like the whole world was against. He would be in stadiums and the stadium, there'd be a hundred thousand people in the stadium and they would be chanting about fucking his wife. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that, but they would be chanting like about, and his wife would be in the stadium and he's out there on the field and they'd be throwing things, chanting at his wife, the whole crowd. And then when he, and his fans, not, not, not the other team's fans, the team he was on's fans. He went to another team and because he failed in this level, like, and I, I, I watched it a long time ago, so I'm not like, I can't remember it all, but he missed a goal and, and then he did some shit and then the whole, his whole country was against him. All the pressure was against him and him and his wife were then against each other. They had to come together. They had to figure out how to support each other. Dude, it was painful. He had kids. They were chasing his kids around. I mean, dude, like that's extreme, extreme. Man, look at Donald Trump and these guys, man. They got that. They got extreme pressure. Guys, all we got to do is have pressure to, to be great to understand our pain, you know, and I mean, ultimately, if we can do this and we can do it at a high level, then we're gonna get to where we're going. Every single one of you are gonna get to where you wanna go. There's only one rule, you just can't quit. And maybe the second rule is you gotta stay aware of these things and have a little fun along the way. Smile in the adversity, smile in the pain. Be like, dude, this is just part of my story, man. This is just part of the shit that I got to go through to become that person. You know, this is part of what, what, what he wants me to figure out. And so, you know, cool. I'm going to go through it. So I want you guys to think about this stuff. I don't want you to get motivated from this. I want you to actually, the next time some pain shows up in your life, I want you to have a new behavior. Because if you have a new behavior, an a something happens and then you take a new action, that's where you're intelligent. If you don't have a new behavior and you fall apart, that means you're not even, you're not, a, you're, this is for nothing. You know what I mean? Like this is for nothing. But if, if this pain pops up, if this little agony pops up, if this thing pops up, I want you to have a different relationship with it. And then lastly, I want to read you 
um, this little verse out of the Bible because I read this to my team. What happens is, is I'll turn to just like a devotional or something and I'll tar- start our team meetings off um, in the morning with something. And so I just want to read this one to you guys because it kind of is what we're talking about. And as I was, I was thinking about it, this was yesterday. So I want you guys to think about this. All right. I have promised to meet all of your needs according to my glorious riches. Your deepest, most consistent need is for my peace. I have planted peace in the garden of your heart where I live. But there are weeds growing there too. Pride, worry, selfishness, ego, unbelief. I am the gardener. And I am working to rid your heart of those weeds. I do my work in various ways. When you sit quietly with me, I shine my light and my presence directly into your heart. In this heavenly light, peace grows abundantly and weeds shrivel up. I also send trials into your life. Check this out. This is it. I also send trials into your life. When you trust me in the midst of trouble, peace flourishes. When you trust me in the middle of trouble, peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for these troublesome situations. When you trust me in the midst of trouble, peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for these troublesome situations. The peace they can produce far outweighs the trials and tribulations you will go through. This is exactly what you're trying to find. Thank me for the troublesome situations. The peace they they can produce far outweighs. So it produces something. When you go through this and win this, it's going to produce a level of a mentality and a level of peace that you haven't seen yet. And it could be six months away. It could be 30 days away. It could be two days away. It could be two years away. Don't lose your faith. Have fun along the journey. Be excited. Learn something from this. Deal with it. Grow. Love you guys. Peace out. All right, guys. You're the true one percenters. You made it to the end of the video. Let's go. Like, comment so we know who you are down below. And then share this video to somebody else who needs it. And also turn your notifications on because we got the fire coming every single day. Amazing. We'll see you at the next video. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.